Today's video is going to be a little different from what I normally would do. Today we're going to talk about some of the comments I've gotten the last couple of days over this last video I put up. We want to talk a little bit about that. So we're going to walk around the shop and we're going to tell you a little bit about what I'm doing now. So let's go see what I'm doing because that has to do with what we're talking about today. First off today, we're working on the motorcycle, my personal bike. We got to put a new battery in it. One of the things I want to tell you, this has nothing to do with what the topic's going to be today, is don't buy a battery from Walmart. Stay tuned and see all the excitement we're going to talk about today. So for starters, we're going to start off and just let you know, hey, I'm putting a battery in today. One of the things that we wanted to talk about today is the comments that I've been getting on my motorcycle, on my chopper. Uh, i got several people that have been coming up and saying, you know, this guy doesn't even know what he's talking about. He doesn't know nothing about Harleys. He doesn't know nothing about nothing. You know, one guy even made a comment about it when the engine went over. It didn't really backfire. It was a compression from the valve. Uh, I had a gas can next to it. And he's like, oh, you know, that's real smart. Well, once again, it wasn't a backfire. It wasn't even any gas in the engine yet. So there wasn't an issue that I was really worried about, a fire starting. But some of the things I want to tell you a little bit about is I was a mechanic. I was a mechanic for over 40 years on automotive. That's going back into about 1979 is when I kind of got into my career. Uh, I got out of that towards the end, got to work for a utility company. But what the point is today is we're going to talk about motorcycles. You know, a lot of people are saying, hey, this kid doesn't know anything about what he's talking about. It's very true. I was actually an auto mechanic. You want to talk about 427 engines. You want to talk about a 304. You want to talk about a 390. You want to talk about a 258. You, whatever you want to talk about, a 396 big block. You want to talk about some Holly carburetors. Let's talk. What I've done on my bike, what I'm pretty comfortable with working on the bike that I've had and the bikes I've had over the years is, you know, I put shocks on my bikes. I've done wiring. I've done stereos. I've done just handle grips, all kinds of miscellaneous things I've done. One thing was I never tore into the motor. I never did a lot of mechanical work to it just for the fact that one, it didn't need it. And two, I didn't know a whole lot about it. And it's, most of the time when we're at a rally, I need to ride it. So I didn't want to tie a lot of time up. But the thing I wanted to tell you today is this bike, which I'm assuming I haven't done all my homework yet, but I'm pretty sure that's an EVO motor. By the time we get back from Sturgis in August, we're going to tear into this bike. So in about a year from August, I'll be able to tell you anything and everything you want to know about that bike. Why? Because information is very liable. I've never had to tear into a bike like that. Would I do it for a living? No. But for a bike like this that has no, you know, doesn't matter. If I get it done in a month, if I get it done in six months, if I get it, it takes a year to do it. One, it's going to be good content for you guys to look at. Maybe not all of you are very experienced in doing stuff too. So I want to sit down and show you some of the things that I'm going to be doing to the bike. And, you know, we'll see what the namesayers have to say. You know, just like on Tam's bike, pretty much all the different things she's got on that. It's going back to the same thing with her bike. There's no reason I can't do the majority of the work on the bike because it's not like she's going to ride it every day. When we get to these rallies, unless we get everything done in Daytona, she's not going to be riding it at all because it's too tall for her. It sits up. The guy had it raised four inches and it's just she barely can touch the ground and she's not comfortable on that. So the idea is I'm getting out here in the sun because I wanted to kind of show her bike in the background here while we're talking about it. This is the stuff that we're getting ready to get ready to go for Daytona. So that's what I wanted to talk a little bit about today, just because of these namesayers, you know, the people that put the comments out. And I'm OK with that. I've got thick skin. I never said I was a motorcycle mechanic and I never said I was an expert on motorcycles. I've been riding motorcycles, which I just looked the other day. Over 50 years, I've been riding motorcycles. So yes, I've rode a lot, took the bikes in for repairs. I'm probably the same as probably 70 or 85 percent of the people that drive motorcycles don't know a whole lot about them wasn't until we got the Harley that I started changing the shocks on it. I changed the stereo, put new speakers in. I started doing all my oil changes, changed all three holes, did all the basic maintenance, changed headlights, put new footrest on the bike, you know, just different things I did, not so much to this bike, but to my other bike, put a lot of chrome parts on it, all that kind of stuff I did myself. But tearing into the motor or the transmission, I wasn't comfortable with it. Plus, I didn't have a place to work on it. You know, now we've got that. We've got the shop, we got a lift, you know, at home, my garage has been a mess. Luckily, for the last, I don't know, six months, we've been able to put two cars in the garage. And we have a three-car garage because that third garage is a bar. I haven't really had any whole lot of time to do a whole lot of work that I couldn't get done in one day. So when it talks about that, I can, I'm a mechanic for other things. Golf cart, there's nothing on this golf cart I can't fix. There's nothing in this trailer here that I can't fix. So that when it comes down to it, yes, I could take, if you got an old car at home, you got an old Mustang or an old Camaro, or whatever you might have that you might like. 
I could rewire that whole car with time, that is. And I don't need wiring diagram. I don't need anything like that. I can do it just because I've worked on those cars for so long a time. New cars are a little different. I'm not real set on all the new items that are out. But today, what's so crazy is I always say this. I would go back and be a mechanic today, which I don't want to do because there's really no money in that. Because you got the internet today. It shows you everything. It shows you every screw to take out, everything to do. So it's a whole lot different. It's just like I just watched a video last night about changing a starter, and I found out that I could just take this cover off the side, and I can see the starter work. So that was kind of neat. I thought, you know, hey, I don't know if I'll have time before I leave. If I do, I'll put a video out on it. We can go ahead and pull this cover off, and we can see that starter coming out. Now, I do appreciate some of you out there. That gave me some great ideas. You know, one person said, hey, why don't you get a high torque starter so you won't have any trouble kicking that baby over? Maybe you won't have to do any more to it. I would like to be able, I would like to kick it over. It wasn't since I had my uh, little Honda had a kickstart. That's what Tam said. Have you ever kickstarted a bike? I said, yeah, that one. Never nothing this big. Pretty much I'm finding out to do the valves and stuff to cut back on the compression. Probably going to have to send the heads out. Uh, once again, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to grind the heads down or mill them or whatever needs to be done with them. But I haven't done a lot of research on that yet to see, do I need to do, what, what do I need to do? I definitely want to get it to where it's not so much compression in the motor. I'm not looking to race this bike. The idea of this bike was just to be a fun bike. Take it to the rallies with us. I'd love to take it this year since it's running and everything, but we'd be really cramped in the trailer with three bikes. Plus her bike, I got so much stuff I needed to get done on her bike. Ship that one out to Sturgis. And we could do something there with it, which would be fun. Uh, take it to Buffalo Chip, take it to the Iron Horse, some of the runs like that. They got an EVO show that they do too. So that would be kind of neat to take it there. I would love to take it and ride it around town. You know, I'm not looking to go on the highway with it. You know, if, if we were in Daytona, the one show I'd really love to take it to this year, but it's already in Daytona, it's Willie's Chopper Time Show. If that is the that is the best bike show I have ever been to, no matter what anybody says. Now, we haven't been to the smoke out yet, to where if we get this bike running next year, we might check it out in 2025, taking it out to the smoke out, because we're not going to be doing a whole lot of rallies, I think, next year. We're going to be doing some bike stuff. If it's got to do with the veterans, if it's got to do with the veterans bike, or if it's got to do with the chopper, or Tam's bike, or you don't know, no telling what else we might buy in the future here. There's been a few bikes, and we're also looking at some stuff down at Copart. Uh, actually, got a bike going on sale today, which I don't really have the cash right now. But they had a 2022 1250 Harley. Got like 50 miles on the guy totaled it. It's not really totaled. It's just all scratched up on both sides. I, it's right now, it's at 1650 uh, It would be a great bike to get. It may, no reserve. It's probably going to sell for, you know, two or $3,000 would be nice. I don't have that kind of cash right now, so we're not looking to do that right now. I'm not even looking at the auction because I don't want to get any ideas. I need to get a trailer so we can start hauling them versus a U-Haul truck. You know, somebody made a comment about that too, that, oh, you know, a real biker knows how to bike a bike down the ramp. True enough. But I haven't done it. I do it in the RV all the time. We pull the ramp down. I back it out all the time. I, I back out my big bike. No problems whatsoever. But in this case here, it, I was just a little uncomfortable. I haven't done it in the small ramp. I don't know if I could find all the people. I You wouldn't believe what I used to do with that Honda 750 I had. I would hit that ramp doing about 30 or 40 miles an hour, hit the top of the ramp. I'd lock it up. I'd swing it around. I have back bikes down ramps. I'm getting a little older. I'm a little more... I don't know if you want to say scared or a little more terrified. Uh, I see myself just like riding a motorcycle. I've been, I don't know, 120 miles an hour is probably about the fastest I was when I was younger. Now, when we're at 80 or 90 miles an hour, I'm like, all I can do is see myself skinning down the highway. When you were younger and a kid, things like that, you didn't think about things like that. You know, you were indestructible, just like my grandkids are today. They're indestructible. They don't think about anything's ever going to happen to them. So, yeah, you know, the name callers and things like that. I'm okay with that. I've got tough skin. I just wanted to kind of talk about that because, I mean, I got a lot of people, you know, we're over 10,000 views now on that video, and I'm really excited about it. And that's one of the reasons we bought this bike was to give you guys some more content, maybe find some people that I normally wouldn't have watched my channel. That's kind of what we wanted. That's kind of where I'm going. You know, maybe in a, a year or two, you know, I'm already getting older. I'm 63 years old. And, you know, I don't know how long I'm going to fiddle around and do stuff like this, but I want to get to the point where I, you know, somebody else asked, going through a midlife crisis. Maybe. But I mean, I've always wanted to do that. You know, we got the rack now. I don't know if we're going to get into the veteran bikes. I definitely want to get into it. I want to do that. Same thing. I'm going to be doing work on those bikes too, like it or not. 
we're going to be putting in whatever it takes to get the bikes running right, uh, replace the body parts if there's things damaged on them, you know, going to make them to be really decent bikes to give to these veterans. And we've got a couple ideas. We actually talked to a great veteran over the weekend at the Mecham auction. He gave us some great ideas about what we could do and maybe we could get some bikes. Uh, we got a couple dealers that are very interested, but I don't know when they say interested, if they mean they want me to buy something or they're willing to give it to us so we can, you know, fix it up for the vet, which oh, the whole idea of that was too, is to give content to my channel where we can sit down and talk about these bikes, just like you guys. You, some of you have had some, some of the greatest information and help already on my new bikes that we would bought, you know, different comments that they've made. And I love that. I love that great information. And that's one of the things that's great about YouTube. Uh, I love reading the comments. I read everybody's comments, even the bad ones, you know, and I'm okay with that. And a lot of you don't know who I am. If you're new to the channel and you haven't ever seen this before, you may be looking at me thinking, you know, who the hell is this guy? What does he know? He definitely is talking about this bike and he don't know nothing. True enough. I can compare it to a car. I pretty much already have figured out just by thinking about it. The starter's probably shot on that bike. Somebody else said the other day was, you know, if the voltage doesn't, which I know that too, if the voltage isn't high enough and you try to keep cranking on it, it could ruin the starter. Okay. We only tried starting it that few minutes, few seconds, and that's about it. And same thing, I didn't crank on the starter or anything like that. When it spun, I let off, hit it, hit it. I'd love to pull that cover off because I want to make sure the ring is in good shape because I actually watched that. It's really very easy to take all that apart and put a new starter in. It'll take me a day probably to do it because it'll be the first time I've done it. We got to take all the stuff off the front, take the chain off, take the clutches out, all that stuff, and then go and pull the starter out of the back. Now, I haven't looked at it. That was already on a soft tail, uh, EVO soft tail. So it may be a little bit different to what I'm doing, but... Once again, I've been an auto mechanic. I've done, last company I worked for was an appliance company. It was a SoCal gas. I was a gas technician. I had to work on all kinds of stuff. I'm very, very handy. I can pretty much do whatever I need to do. It's just being comfortable to do that. With the shop now, I have no limitations anymore. No, I'm not looking to fix your bike. But like I say, Ray across the street came in. He wanted to put all new exhaust on and headers on it. And he did most of the work. I just kind of overseen him and talked about it because he had never done it. And so I just kind of overseen him because I put some exhaust on this bike and on my last bike I did myself. And that's, it's not that tough. Just get everything lined up, get everything clamped down, wait until you get everything good before you snug it all up. And I've got some, you know, just general policies and things that I know from being a mechanic. Uh, I definitely know a motorcycle, especially on a Harley. And I don't know about other ones. They definitely, everything, almost everything's got to be torqued, which is not a big deal. Because on motors, you always did that on motors, but not so much on, you know, if I installed a water pump or a starter and all that, I never torqued any of that stuff. You just put it on good and tight. Oh, that was the other thing I was going to talk about. For all you guys that are saying, I don't know how to work on a bike, you're a Harley guy. Can you work on a Suzuki? Can you work on a Moto Guzzo? Can you work on some of those other bikes? See, when I was on a mechanic, I had to work on all that crap. Everything from a Volkswagen to a Rolls Royce to a to a Chevy, to a Chrysler, to a Dodge, to an Isuzu, to a, I don't know what all those crazy cars we had back then. But, you know, I worked on all that junk. AMC was out still back when I started working on cars. I, worked, I had a guy, I had a pacer, he used to bring it all the time, he used to work on it. I worked at two dealerships and I worked the rest of the time independently. So I've got a lot of experience with that. So when you look at a motorcycle shop, most guys that work on Harleys don't know that much about other styles of bikes. Well, then again, why? Why don't you know all that? So that's kind of my things that I think about when I started thinking about this this morning. I thought, you know, I started reading some comments that just came up this morning. And I'm thinking, you know, can that guy fix a Suzuki? Can he work on an old, can he go in there and tear into that old Indian with a 941 engine in it? You know, can you get on that old 19, oh, what is it, 1917, 1912 Harley, 1903 Harley? Can you get in there and rebuild that motor? You know, do you have that experience? Have you done it? Are you afraid to jump into it? You know, if you're not, hey, maybe I'll buy one of those vintage bikes and we can come contact you and you can help me rebuild that bike. I'll come to you. I'd love to have one of those bikes and ride it. One went through the assembly line or through the auction this week and, and it said it run. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I would love to have a vintage bike. I would love, I've already said the Cannonball, it's going to be next year, 2025. I would love, no matter what bike I have, I'm not going to follow them on the chopper, but probably on my touring bike. I would love to follow these guys. And somebody else wrote on my channel, you know, they only drive 200 miles a day. And that's, I'm okay with that. It's it's got nothing to do with the ride. It's got to be in the presence of those bikes going down the road and the experience of the guys that ride them. To me, that's just, I can't talk it. And when I look at all this stuff, it's just like speeds when, uh, when they're working on those bikes and stuff. That group, Sons of Speeds, we're going to be there in Daytona. If you've got time, no, you need to make time. You want to see the vintage bikes. You want to see bikes running as much as 75 miles an hour with no freaking brakes on a dirt track. There you go. 
come out there on the Saturday, check out that race because we'll be there. That is, the, if you if you're a real motorcycle person, you're the bike builder or you're the guy that works on the bikes and you know it all, then you should be there because you're going to meet the people that build bikes. You're going to meet the people that race those bikes. You know, I would, I don't know if I could ever do that. I say once again, we're getting older. I would love to run around that track. I don't know if I could get up to 70 miles an hour on a, on one of those without brakes. But uh, when I was a kid, my brother had a, a mini bike that had, it ran about that much and it was all souped up his old bicycle frames welded together and you had to drag your feet i don't know how many pairs of shoes he went off he, i was a little too small i didn't get to ride that one but uh we've always had that in our family my brothers always had motorcycles he don't have one today but when we were kids we always had that my dad wasn't a big motorcycle person uh he bought a couple of bikes when we were kids or as we grew up well he bought a bike and he thought he'd ride with us all the time well the problem was i rode farther than he did that's where we're going to kind of leave this at today you know i just wanted to kind of give you a thought on what I think about all this stuff. And I'm like I say, I'm never, even when I, if I totally rebuild that bike from start to finish, I'm still not gonna say I'm a motorcycle mechanic because I might know all about that bike, but you might pull in here with something else. And I'm like, I don't have no idea what you got. You know, it's, they're all different. Harley's changed the engines. You know, can you look at that brand new CBO or can you work on the electric bike that they had, the live wire for a while? Oh, hell with that live wire, there he goes. It's still a Harley bike. It was a Harley bike during that time. So when you go back and look at the AMFs, you know, did you, did you, was you involved with that? So when you look at all the different bikes and when somebody says, you know, it just kind of got under my skin a little bit to me or where I thought about it. I mean, most of you probably, not most of you, most of you do know that I was an auto mechanic and I was mechanically inclined and I've gotten hundreds of comments already on there and most of them have been really great they're supporting and all that i'm not down from any of this i just wanted to come out and say a little bit about this what i thought from those comments let you guys hear something i don't know if you go through all the comments and stuff but i mean a couple people liked what they said when they oh he don't know nothing about it. maybe i don't maybe i do and time will tell and you know nobody knows it all just like when i was in the automotive i what i didn't i got to the point where i ended up doing front end work brakes and um alignments and, and that kind of thing. That's what I did because it got to the point where there was too much stuff out there and to try to, there's no such thing as an all around mechanic anymore. Uh, maybe if you have a certain, you know, if you're working on 2014s and newer, yeah, you can pretty much cover all that stuff. But when you start getting back to the older bikes, that's when they get all different, just like cars. You know, every one of these cars, when somebody says, well, I can work on anything. Well, I'll go find you a nice car and see if you can fix it. You know, I worked on, uh, one was a Rolls Royce I used to work on all the time. And I had Austin Martin. Couldn't believe Austin Martin had a Chrysler starter. And uh, so, but it was really funny how they took a lot of the parts that were like, kind of like AMC when they built their cars, took a lot of parts from everybody else and made our, they made their cars. Kind of like that, you go down to Mexico, if you want to buy a car, you look in, a, the, the GM isn't really a GM, it's just a bunch of parts shoved together. So with that, we're going to leave you right here. That was going to be today's video. Got another one out tomorrow. We're going to tell you a little bit about what we've done, getting ready to go to Daytona. Got a little bit uh, more work that I've done, something more I want to talk about the bike. And so with that, we'll leave you right here. And thanks for watching. And thanks for subscribing. And we do appreciate all of you. And we're kind of figuring out, looks like next week we're heading to date, we're heading out to Daytona. So if you're in Daytona, let us know. We're hopefully going to be there by the 16th is the hope. No later than the 17th, because the 18th, we have an event that we're going to be down at the Beaver Bar with uh, Heavy Ed from Midwest Cycles. He's got the where he's he's the oldest. He's not the oldest, but his shop is the oldest shop for renting Harley Davidsons. He rented them before Harley Davidson ever did. So if you're looking for a bike to rent in Daytona or you're looking to rent a bike in Sturgis, he's the one that's right there on Junction, right there in that same shop. He's been there for, I think he's getting close to 30 years now. Last time was 28, so I'd say it's probably been a year or two. So he's 29 or 30 years he's been there. So he's been doing it way longer than Harley didn't. Harley don't even rent bikes anymore. Now it's Eagle Rider, so who's renting the bikes. So with that, we're going to leave you. We'll see you there, and I uh, got some more videos. And oh yeah, by the way, we're gonna do our last live ever on Sunday, so stay tuned before we head to Daytona.